The great thing about the language paper one exam is that it follows a fairly routine structure. In other words, it follows a really predictable pattern when it comes to how the questions are worded, meaning if you understand how to structure and approach the questions because you know exactly what each question is looking for, you can literally put yourself in a really powerful position to get grade eights and grade nines in your final exam. So what I wanted to do within this video was to show you how to craft a perfect response for question two of the language paper one exam. This is the language question and I wanted to use the 2020 Rosie slash Stranger Child GCSE paper as an example of how to craft a perfect paragraph for question number two of language paper one. So as you can see behind me, I've basically put forward the question itself, but equally split up the response into these different colors to show you how you can apply the peel paragraph structure, so this is point, evidence, explanation, link, in writing a grade eight and grade nine response to the language paper one question two exam, okay? So always remember, and I'm gonna go over the question here, and this is for the 2020 Rosie exam. Remember that this question always asks you, how does the writer use language to describe blah, blah, blah? In this instance, it was, how does the writer use language to describe the garden? This is the garden that was described within the insert where we've got Rosie who sees the stranger child within the garden. It always tells you to look at a really particular section of the text to select your evidence. So of course, I am assuming that you're going to be selecting the correct evidence from that set, uh, from that section of the text, which is right there in front of you in a text box. Okay. So make sure you do so. Now, once you have selected your text, as I mentioned, I would suggest going for a really simple, straightforward peel paragraph. But of course, when you're actually including the contents of your peel paragraph, point evidence explanation link, this is where you're gonna go into detail. And I'll show you the depth that you can go into. So as I mentioned, you start off with your point, your evidence, your explanation, and then your links. Let's start off by looking at the point. And of course, before you even go into it, make sure you always highlight or underline the keywords in the question, because those are the same keywords you're gonna be using throughout your response to indicate to your examiner and your teacher that you understand the assignment, you understand what the question is asking you to focus in on. So in this case, the key words were language describing garden. So let's have a look at the opening point. The writer evocatively describes the mulberry tree as dominating the entire garden and it lends an uncanny atmosphere to it. Okay, so here I've already started talking about the garden and how it is being described. And more specifically, I've mentioned one particular aspect of this garden, which is in the extract, and this is the mulberry tree that's right there. Let's carry on. In fact, the tree seems colossal as it stretches across the garden. So I've started off by talking about how the garden is described with this particular focus on this mulberry tree. And I've also used, hopefully you've noticed, ambitious language, okay? I've started off by saying the writer evocatively, the writer powerfully describes whatever, right? Again, this is a good way to start off your opening pill paragraph. Equally, instead of saying that the tree seems really gigantic or this tree seems quite large, I say words like colossal to emphasize that this tree is quite large. Always remember that, you know, part of your answer, really, uh, you're gonna be awarded better marks if you're using ambitious language and showing off your range of vocabulary, okay? So that's my opening point. I've started off by directly referring back to the description of the garden and what's been described within the garden. So now let's have a look at how I have embedded my quotation. Embedding means if I were to take out the speech marks within the quote, it still flows as part of the sentence. Okay, that's a really sophisticated way of quoting from a text. So let's have a look. There is an, and then evidence, ancient mulberry tree in the midst of trees and shrubs. So I've embedded the quotations, ancient mulberry tree, as well as the quotes, trees and shrubs. Again here, I'm making my evidence quite concise, but I've also made sure that I've embedded really relevant quotations that I'm going to now unpack, okay? So let's have a look at the explanation. Remember your explanation, this is where the bulk of your marks are. This is where you have analytical depth. This is where you can do your word level analysis. This is where you can really unpack different elements of the quotation that you're discussing to illustrate how this relates back to the question. So let's have a look. The writer successfully uses language relating it back to the question, belonging to the semantic field of foliage, foliage means just plants, trees, flowers, and so on. 
including trees and shrubs to illustrate how vast and gargantuan the mulberry tree is. So my first sentence within my explanation, I have immediately started by identifying language technique. Remember, semantic field is a language technique. It literally relates to a category. So for instance, the word roses, daffodils and lilies belongs to the semantic field of plants. The words laptop, smartphone and iPad belongs to the semantic field of the category of technology. So in this case, it's the words trees and shrubs, which belong to the semantic field of nature or foliage. However, I don't stop there. I then do some word level analysis in my explanation. Okay, so that this is really important. The adjective ancient, so now here I'm relating it back to this first quotation, lends the mulberry tree a mysterious aura emphasizing how the garden seems surreal and enchanted. So I've started off by talking about general language point in my first explanation sentence, talking about semantic field, but then I then develop it and relate it to a really specific word. So then I do some word level analysis and I talk about the adjective. So I really zoom in on that word before after I've done that with my explanation and I've also, of course, beyond my explanation, I've added my own interpretation, okay? This idea that, you know, this tree is really massive. It seems almost something that's taken out of a fairy tale, right? It's really surreal, it's really enchanted. Now that's me injecting some of, some of my own personal opinions as to why the author might use that type of language. Now you need to be able to have the confidence to do so, okay? This is stuff that's not immediately obvious to you when you're reading the extract and looking at the quote, but you need to unpack it and show okay I think if they use this adjective or they use this language technique I think this is what they're trying to show me that's really important to include in your explanation now linking it back to the question and linking how language is used to describe the garden consequently the garden is portrayed as supernatural and it seems to have an immense peculiar mulberry tree that dominates it. So now here I've extended this idea of this garden being a little bit otherworldly, maybe a bit of a fairy tale as a result of this huge mulberry tree. Again, what I've done is not only have I related it back to the question, but I've also extended from my explanation, this notion and this interpretation that I've given it as the garden being surreal and interesting for us as readers, okay? Once more, this is stuff that's not gonna be given to you. You need to kind of be able to unpack it and have the confidence to state, okay, I think if it's saying this, this is exactly what it means, okay? So that's really it when it comes to how to answer and how to craft a really, really good, strong opening paragraph. And you wanna do two of these types of paragraphs for question number two in order to secure the full eight marks, okay? You wanna start off with your opening point, two sentences, the first sentence relating it to the question, and then obviously the second sentence just developing your opening point. Then you want to embed your evidence. So this is in your first E, your first evidence. Then in your second E, which is your explanation, this is where you talk about language techniques. This is where you unpack it. You first talk about a general and interesting language technique, simile, metaphors, and so on. But then you then zoom in on one word, like an adjective or a noun or a verb, then unpack what that could mean. When you're unpacking that, have the confidence within yourself to say, okay, I think if this is meant to be like a fairy tale, I'm gonna write that. And I'm gonna say, this is why I think so, okay? They're using this language to make, you know, to, to really illustrate this. In my case, I said that there's this element of enchantment or mystery. And then in your link, you simply link it back using keywords like consequently, thus, therefore, etc., etc. So that's really it when it comes to writing and crafting the perfect paragraph, the perfect pill paragraph, for the language question two, um, for question two in language paper one. Thanks so much for listening.